The Second Amendment of the U.S. Constitution reads, A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. The number of militias in the United States is on the rise, along with the rise in anti-government sentiment. The 18th century founders of the United States considered militias a way for citizens to defend themselves from oppressive governments with large armies. But are these armed groups still necessary? CCTV's Jim Spellman reports. On a small patch of federally owned land in the U.S. state of Oregon, a standoff simmers. A group of well-armed men have taken over a small outpost on a wildlife refuge. But the men with guns aren't ISIL or Al-Qaeda. This is the Constitution. That's what we're up here for, the Constitution. In fact, they consider themselves patriots, part of a small but growing right-wing anti-government movement in the United States. Yeah. According to the Southern Poverty Law Center, a nonprofit organization that monitors extremist groups in the U.S., anti-government militia groups have grown by more than a third in the last year. They count 276 active groups after several years of decline. In the early 1990s, government standoffs in Waco, Texas and Ruby Ridge, Idaho fueled the militia movement. Then in 1995, a former U.S. Army soldier named Timothy McVeigh set off a truck bomb outside a federal building in Oklahoma City, killing 168. It remains the second deadliest terrorist attack in U.S. history surpassed only by the attacks of September 11, 2001. To the American public at large, ISIS is the buzzword, and it's what people are most concerned about. But I go back to Timothy McVeigh. I mean, we need to keep a close eye on these, these groups in the United States because they have the potential to do real damage. A standoff in 2014 between federal authorities and a rancher named Cliven Bundy in Nevada brought new energy to the militia movement. Bundy's son leads the Oregon standoff. The group claims ranchers face unfair restrictions to federal land. The plan here is to take all of these property titles and transfer them back to the people. To take them out of the federal government's hands, because they're not constitutionally allowed to be there, and to transfer them, uh, do a title transfer back to the people. Beyond the militia groups, there have been a number of politically driven lone wolf attacks and hate crimes. U.S. authorities say just as ISIL recruits on the Internet and encourages lone wolf attacks, domestic attacks are often spawned online and carried out by a single person driven by racial hatred or distrust of government. Last year, a white gunman attacked an African-American church in South Carolina, killing nine. A shooter in Colorado attacked a facility that performs abortions, killing three and wounding nine. Kill the babies. That's what Planned Parenthood does. So far, the standoff in Oregon has been peaceful. Officials have been reluctant to confront the militiamen, fearing the situation might escalate. Authorities seem content to wait them out, at least for now. Jim Spellman, CCTV, Washington. Joining me now is John Lott, author of several books, including More Guns, Less Crime, and The Bias Against Guns. John, thanks for joining us. Well, thanks for having me on. As we heard in that report, militias are on the rise in the United States, something like 300 different militia groups right now. What's behind this growth? Well, I mean, we're still talking about a very small number of people in each of these places. Uh, you know, you take the what's happening out in Oregon, you have something like 20 people, up to 20 people, uh, in a small, isolated area. Basically, what the government's going to do is just ignore them until they give up and, and leave the area, and then at that point, they'll arrest them. But you're talking about a very small number of people. You know, the number of groups itself doesn't quite give you an idea of how many, how few people there are actually involved in this. Right. Even if it's a small number of groups, what do most militias want? Well, I think... They're just dissatisfied with the way things are going in the country. They feel that, uh, you know, they're, these are relatively poor people. Uh, their incomes may not have gone up or may have fallen over time. I think they're probably dissatisfied with the way their lot in life has been changing. And out of frustration, they, they you know, try to do things like this. In this case, in the West, you have to realize that there's been a lot of conflicts between the federal government that owns the vast majority of the land in many of the western states and how it's allowed people to use that has changed dramatically over time and people who have been able to use that land in the past or had access to it 
uh, feel that their livelihoods or other things have been affected as a result of those changes in regulations. Have they lost faith in the political system uh, by resorting to the taking up of arms? Well, you know, again, I think these individuals are more uh, wanting to be portrayed as victims. So you have, uh, you have Waco in the past where uh, under the Clinton administration they attacked uh, the Branch Davidian compound there and you had uh, 70 some people who were killed. I think these people would love to be martyrs in a sense and so they'd like the government to go and attack them and instead I think the government has wised up over time and basically is just going to ignore them uh, until they give up and go away. I mean this is a tiny isolated building that's way in a, a rural area there. It really doesn't matter to anybody that these guys have taken over this small building. And, uh, you know, so there's no reason to have to go in. There's no hostage situation. There's no lives that are endangered. And so they're just going to wait them out. Do you think the situation would be very different if it were different groups of people, say Islamic militants or any other groups, radical groups that was doing this? I don't think it would make any difference. It's a standard police practice that if you have no hostages, no lives are in danger, uh, there's no reason, and you know, there's nothing crucial being affected by these individuals being where they are. Uh, why go and take an aggressive stand? If you take an aggressive stand and actually go in with some type of uh, heavy force, lives could be lost. Instead, just wait them out. Uh, we have the luxury here, since there's no hostages, no lives are being threatened, to simply wait these individuals out. Now, we are seeing the emergence of these militias in the United States. It's not new. Uh, militias have their roots in U.S. history. Back in the 17th century, the colonialists, of course, formed militias uh, to protect themselves. But now we have a multitude, myriad law enforcement agencies in the United States in almost every single jurisdiction. So is there still a need for militias? Well, I don't, I don't really think these are militias in the classic sense that you had uh, back a few hundred years ago. Uh, you have individuals, small, tiny groups of individuals who are upset about different things. And so they form together groups and they call themselves a militia. I mean, I suppose people could call themselves anything they wanted to call themselves. But these are just small groups of disaffected individuals. Uh, I mean, just calling them a militia doesn't really add anything to anything. That's just what they, they want to wrap themselves in the Constitution, and so they use a term that's in the Constitution in order to try to, they think, give themselves some legitimacy. Right. As you say, these are disaffected militias, but the media is not so charitable. I mean, some of the elements of the media refer to them as being misguided, as even being crazy. Well, I mean, I suppose some of them are kind of nutty, type individuals, uh, but, uh, you know, I just, I think these are kind of basically pretty harmless individuals. I mean, in this case, in the Bundy Ranch case, uh, there's no violence, uh, and if the police just leave them alone until they get tired and give up, uh, you know, the, nothing more will happen, really. Do you see this phenomena growing in, in the years ahead? Well, I mean, it's pretty small right now. I mean, I suppose even if a small number of people grow, joined it, it would be a large percentage increase in what they have. Uh, my own guess is these things kind of ebb and flow. Uh, we've had a very slow economic recovery, uh, probably the worst economic recovery we've ever had and, uh, since they've started recording these numbers. So it's not surprising to me that relatively poor individuals uh, who live in these rural areas uh, might feel that more frustrated than they would have otherwise. But again, we're talking about, you know, we're talking about groups that may have like 10 people on them. Uh, some of them may be a little bit larger, but these are pretty small organizations that are around there. So just going and saying a number of, of uh, 300 or what have you uh, really doesn't give people a true idea how small we're talking about. But should we be concerned by the fact that they are very well armed? We know that even one person, an individual, can cause mayhem. Sure. Look, these guys want to be victims. If you listen to what they say, they talk about Waco, they talk about uh, 
uh, the uh, Idaho uh, fiasco that happened about the same time, where the federal government went in, uh, killed people that were there, and those people became martyrs. If you listen to their rhetoric, these people, I think, kind of actually hope the same thing happens. They hope that they get attacked by the federal government. They're not going to go out and attack. They want to be martyrs here. There are no hostages here. It's just basically the same group of people, uh, fewer than 20 people that they have there. And so uh, the right response from the federal government is what they're doing. Right response from local police is what they're doing. And that is basically just ignore these guys. Uh, you know, if they leave, they can go and arrest them. Uh, they've obviously committed a crime in this case. But there's no reason to take aggressive action against them because nothing really important is being threatened in any way by them having this small rural building uh, that's completely isolated from every place else.